pleasure to me all at last and welcome back to films I should have talked about years ago. So now what we got for today is a pretty interesting mystery, thriller, suspense, horror film of all sorts. From Sony Pictures we have ourselves a 2018 film known as Searching. This was one of many films that I actually wanted to see in 2018. If you probably know by now, I have seen the likes of quite a few films in 2018. It was at the time my biggest record of how many films I went to the theater to see. Whereas typically, going to the theater to watch new movies would pretty much be something for special occasions. We would sort of limit that to maybe two or three times a year. But 2018, I more than doubled that. Seeing the likes of Game Night, Life of the Party, as well as the likes of Mid-90s, First Man, Venom, and even Crazy Rich Asians by John M. Chu. Another 2018 film would certainly have done me well. And of all of them that I would have gotten to pick, Searching would have been the one. And I really gotta say, this one actually did the impossible. It was very much like what had happened that same exact year with A Quiet Place by John Krasinski. Of course, we know that in that sense, A Quiet Place was a huge, unlikely success and had also spawned sequels. Of course, I will get to talk about those in a little while, but going back to searching now, this was basically one of those that I do consider to be an unlikely success as well. Being that it had a budget of only $880,000, and it also had itself somewhat mixed reviews, including a very high rating of 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, and somewhat average ratings by the likes of IMDB, for instance, or Letterboxd, even though that one isn't really as heard of as the other two, but of course, the real kicker is that this film actually exceeded $75 million. And with a budget of 880 grand, if you do yourself the math, then that means that this film has profited over 75 times its budget. Now that is huge compared to many. It sure was a huge success, probably on par with not just The Quiet Place, but also with the likes of a few other movies in 2018 that I have seen. Uncle Drew, The Nun, and even The First Purge, which of course I have seen in theaters as well. So of course, I do consider Searching to be a big success by all means. And not only that, but it also had itself a casting that comprises the likes of Michelle Law, Sarah San, and Thomas Barbuska. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. Just names alone are hilarious to hear a lot of times. Anyways, what this basically circumnavigates is it centers on the story of a missing child a friend who ends up going missing, and an investigation happens to have nothing. They bring no evidence in line, no leads, no witnesses, no interrogation reports, nothing. So what did these guys do? What did these crazy old civilians trying to live everyday lives end up doing? They actually go through their friend's own laptop. Yeah, it's very similar to ways of what we've seen in more recent movies. Sometimes there happens to be documents or other such clues that end up being leaked on their own devices. After they are hacked in a way and accessed by any of their own colleagues or peers, etc., etc., sometimes something actually turns up that the investigation does not. So what do they find? They go through all sorts of different things, media files, photos, videos, and whatnot, in the hopes that they would find clues as to where her whereabouts are. Now, I will say that it's a very interesting idea. 
a mystery suspense film that circumnavigates the likes of somebody who goes missing and an investigation turns up nothing at all, but civilians are able to crack the case very high by going into somebody's laptop. And they happen to find all sorts of clues, as a matter of fact. So when you really think about it, it's no wonder why this was a huge success. That's also because the writing and screenplay was also fairly done well. The casting was okay. It's certainly nothing like what I've talked about in Outbreak 1995, where you have all sorts of well-known actors in there. But in here, I hardly know the likes of Michelle Law, Sarah Son, Thomas Barbuska. <laughs> yeah. I hardly know any of them, to be more specific, but... Well, this movie sure gets crazy. I did give it another watch not too recently on YouTube after renting it. 4K Ultra for only four bucks. That's a pretty nice deal for a few days to be able to see it. And the fact is, I just gave it another watch so I could make myself a video here on this series. I do have to mention a few other specific portions of this film entirely because by the time they do get to the very end of the plot line, where the climax supposedly takes place, you would not trust what happens next. They not only discover their lost friend, but they also discover something else. A big, terrifying menace. A menace that has been stalking them and even straight up killing them, assassinating them. Of course, with the likes of various other cliche villains that we have seen, especially when you think about how Freddy Krueger was able to infiltrate people's dreams and kill them from within, Jason Voorhees is seen as immortal and slashes everybody to death with one clean swipe of his machete. And then you have Michael Myers who constantly comes back through every sequel that comes up. But in this film, we hardly get anything. Except this. Yeah, I'm probably not entirely sure why they chose to do something like this, but you know what? It's just what it is. A menace. A menace that tries to kill them, but just like many films nowadays, we have to have a proper climax. The villains don't get to win this one. The heroes do. And I'd say in that exact spirit, Searching in a nutshell, while the ending might sound disappointing, the whole idea of this is well played that it's no wonder why it became so successful. The box office may be 75.5 million bucks, which is certainly nothing compared to the mass successes of hundreds of other movies today, but at least compared to its own budget which was less than a million, it's still enormous. In many ways possible. You could hardly look at it any other way. But in any case, my overall ranking on this KFN official scoring would have to be 7.9 out of 10.1. It sure is gonna be nowhere close to the likes of The Bad Guys or The Suicide Squad or Toy Story or Godzilla, Long Live the King. Any scorings of those surely are the highest I've ever ranked because I know for sure that they are some of the greatest films ever possibly made in history. But here we have something that is very interesting, but when you actually watch it, you might feel a little bit different, almost deceived in a way. With all the huge marketing placements that they put on this and with the crowd that it managed to attract, I feel like that that has to hold some accountability for its success. Otherwise, seeing the film itself probably isn't all too much worth your time. It might be worth it for maybe a rental every once in a while, but maybe not something you could binge watch every day. And with that in mind, that concludes another portion of this series. But make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side if you'd like to see more 